involved with other than sisters. It, it started out um, being land that was owned by the county, I'm gonna say, that was um, then bought by the Oregon Sustainable Agricultural Land Trust, uh, which is a nonprofit, uh, very unique. They, they hold um, rural and urban lands. Um, throughout the metro area, there's, there's a farm in Canby, um, and as well, um, every site that you see um, for the UFC is under the umbrella of OSA. So in 2009, the Oregon Sustainable Agricultural Land Trust. Yeah, you can see it over on like the side over there. Um, so the UFC started separately from OSA in 2009, and then I want to say in 2010 is when officially uh, the Urban Farm Collective was under the umbrella of Old Salt. Um, and then something to keep in mind is that this site, I want to say, um, it was owned by Old Salt in 2006. So it, it was sort of hanging around there for a few years. And then when the Urban Farm Collective was involved with, with Old Salt in 2010 is when they figured it'd be a natural match to have this site um, eventually contribute to the market for the UFC that they hold uh, July through October every Monday. Um, so, and, and that was a way for, for this site not only to contribute um, a lot of perennial things, but also for this site to access the volunteer base that the UFC has. It just seems like a lot of young people navigate to the UFC site. Um, there's a lot of people involved with it. About 15 sites throughout the northeast side and a lot of volunteers. I'm not sure exactly how many, but you guys did a report for the past two years. and. It's you know, like a thousand or something. I think like the database of volunteers is probably that big. Yeah, but in it's, terms it's of people like active, active, I think it's like you know, great. A couple years ago, it was like sixty people. Or, uh, I think it, no, that, I think it was like one hundred and fifty people actually participating in all the programs. But people kind of drift. Yeah, great. So, um, so with with this site, um, I've been involved since two thousand fourteen, um, and and last year it was basically just hacking down the blackberries with a machete and sheet stacking it with wood chips and burlap and then um, once we kind of we were able to um, take more of like a management role uh, we, we really kind of changed things up as the way that it is a UFC site in the sense that a lot of UFC sites you'll see have about one or two garden managers that you know handle the work parties and uh, things like that this site um, we, we sort of changed things to allow for it to be kind of a collective management team that encompasses, you know, folks from the UFC, folks from Sisters of the Road. Um, we had some folks from the Oregon Food Bank who have been really active with the site. We we want to really open it up for as many people to be involved with, um, you know, the meetings that we have on Sunday where we discuss future objectives and obstacles and projects and things like that. Um, it's it's just a really unique way for us to be able to attract young people who have free time that want to be able to explore and do their own thing. Um, like this site is really about research and education. So you'll, you'll see we have a lot of things that, um, you know, we're just trying to ex ex experiment with. Like um, one thing that we wanted to start this year is we shaped out sort of the what I would call like the guild beds around the, the fruit trees. You'll see like circles around that we sheet stacked with uh, scraps and straw and, and uh, a few different types of compost and chips. And then we uh, really wanted to focus on pioneer annuals to contribute to the farm stand with sisters, which I'll have uh, Travis explain as well. But so you'll, you'll see things that you may not see in a typical forest garden. Uh, this is like the first year that we really started to ramp up what we do. So yeah, it's, it's, it's very, um, yeah, I would say just kind of hit or miss or so, you know, there are some things that didn't do very well, um, you know, in, in full sun, but at, at the same time, we were able to observe where the, where the shade's at, where the most fertile soil is, and, um, you know, we had a great year, a really amazing yield with uh, things that we were hoping to grow and contribute to the market, like tomatoes and melons and cabbage. Um, so yeah, it was it was a learning experience for me. You know, I I, I had a blast, but I would say the most important thing for, for me was collaborating with Sisters of the Road. That was where we really saw all these amazing things and a volunteer base come to the site that had never really happened before. Um, last year it was probably three people involved, and now it's like an ebb and flow of you know 
five to ten to fifteen people when we had like the barbecue on Memorial Day it was just packed and it was like a family of people and uh, I've, I've met folks in the last six months that uh, I'll, I'll know forever so yeah this has been a really awesome thing for, for myself to be involved with and 